Hello. In this video, I'm going to take you through the bond entropy calculations. So there, hopefully you know what bond entropy is by now. If you've not, I do a video on the theory behind bond entropy that you can have a watch of first before doing this. Um, but this video just specifically looks at the bond entropy calculations that you may see within the higher chemistry course. So by the end of this video, hopefully, you should be able to calculate the entropy change of a given reaction using bond entropy values. Now those bond entropy values you will find on page 10 of the data booklet. So in general, the bond entropy values that you'll calculate or the entropy change values, sorry, that you'll calculate using bond entropies tend to just be rough estimates. If you were to go and conduct an experiment in the laboratory to find the entropy change of the reaction, you'd probably end up with a slightly different value. The reason for that is that mostly because we have mean bond entropies for some bonds, which means that the value given in the data booklet is an average. So depending on what chemical environment or molecule that bond exists within, the bond entropy could be slightly different, which could give you slight differences in your experimental values versus the total values in here. Um, essentially, the calculation works by gathering a net total of the energy you put in to break all the bonds versus the energy you get out when making all the bonds. So things to remember that bond breaking is an endothermic process, so energy needs to be put in to break bonds, whereas bond making is exothermic, so you'll get energy back out. So if you think of it like a bank balance, you can pay money into your bank account, you can take money out, but your final balance of your bank is the net total of the money you've put in versus the money you've taken out, which is essentially how this calculation works. So we add up the bond debt piece for every for breaking every single bond in the reactants and then we add up all the energies for that would be released for making every single bond in the products and we take the net total of them so it basically ends up as a subtraction because if you look at the bottom here when you, you're essentially taking away the bond making energies because it's exothermic so the energy is given out so you're adding a negative which ends up being a subtraction so, but it'll make more sense when we go through the calculation so you will need to do these calculations, uh, your basic booklet, page 10. And so hopefully you've got it beside you at the moment. If not, maybe pause the video and go and grab it. And you'll also need a calculator. Um, otherwise, you can just watch me do the calculations for you. But you're going to need at some point to do it yourself. So every question that you'll get that requires you to use bond entropy values will mention the term using bond entropy values, which is quite helpful. Gives you a bit of a clue that that's what you're to do. And then you'll be given a reaction that you're to calculate the entropy change for. So my advice would be to draw out the reactants because then it's easier to see what bonds are being broken and what bonds are being made. So we've got two moles of hydrogen first of all. So hydrogen is a diatomic with a single bond. And because there's two of them, we're going to draw it twice. And then oxygen is O double bond O. So don't forget oxygen has a double bond between its atoms. Make that a little bit better. And then we've got two moles, molecules of water. So water looks like this, and there is two of them. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to split the page in half. So we're going to have the breaking and then the making. Okay, so we break the bonds and then we make the bonds. So for breaking, we've got two hydrogen to hydrogen bonds. A good thing to do when you're doing this is to score out the bonds as you count them up so you know that you've broken them. So we're going to break this bond and this bond. So that ends up being two times H to H. And then we are going to break one oxygen to oxygen double bond. Okay, I'm just going to list the bonds there. Then we'll go over to the making ones. So we are going to be making an oxygen to hydrogen bond, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So we're making four oxygen to hydrogen bonds here. Okay, so then we look at the entity values in the data booklet. So for hydrogen to hydrogen, that would then be two times 436. For the double bond to oxygen, that would be one times 498. And they're all kilojoules per mole. Okay. 
Uh, then for the making, that would be four times oxygen to hydrogen, which is four, six, three. Okay, so then if we just put those in our calculator and work out what they are, so for the hydrogen to hydrogen, that comes out as 872 kilojoules. Obviously, one times 498 is just 498 kilojoules. And then we add those up. So that comes out as 1,370. Okay. Then for the bond making, if we do the 4 times 463, that comes out as 1,000. 852 kilojoules. I'm just writing it underneath because I've got much space at the side and there's nothing else there to sum up. Okay, so then what we do is find the net total. So the overall length of the change is the bond breaking, which is endothermic. So 1370. So because it's endothermic, you're putting energy in, so you've got a plus. Add the bond breaking, which is exothermic, so that gets a negative because the energy is coming out. So 1852, which equates to 1370 minus 1852. So if you put that in your calculator, you will get negative 482 kilojoules. Okay. Right, my pen's in the limit now over there. Just make sure if you get a negative value in your answer, you put a minus. If you don't end up with a negative in your calculator, you need to remember to put a plus in front. Okay. So we're going to look at another example now. So this example is exactly the same, just with a different reaction. So I'm going to draw the reactants again. So nitrogen has a triple bond, and then we've got three molecules of hydrogen. There we go, and then for our products, we've got um, two moles of ammonia, so that's NH3, which looks like this, and there's two of them. Okay, if you get more confident with these calculations, you don't need to necessarily draw the same molecule three times, just remember that you're going to be breaking three of them, um, but it's sometimes useful in the beginning to make sure that you draw them all out. So, we've got breaking. And then we have making, going for straight lines this time rather than squiggly ones, don't know why, just mixing it up, you know, keep it exciting. So for breaking, we're breaking one nitrogen to nitrogen triple bond. I'm not going to bother change my pink color now. And then we're breaking three hydrogen to hydrogen single bonds, one, two, three. Okay. For the making, we've got nitrogen to hydrogen bonds, and we have one, two, three four, five, six of them. Okay, so then if we look at the values in the data booklet, nitrogen to nitrogen triple bond, okay, there's just one of that, so I'm not going to write, write one times. So 945 kilojoules that'll be. And then for the hydrogen to hydrogen, that will be three times four, three, six. Which I'll work out what that is. So that is 1,308. Okay, so if we take the sum total of that column, and say, uh, that is 2253 kilojoules altogether. So that was just this number plus this number. So then for the making, that would be 6 times 388 kilojoules, which comes out as 2000. 328 kilojoules. Okay, so again, for the overall length of the change, we've got the endothermic breaking, so plus 2253. Add the exothermic uh, breaking, which would be negative 2328. So then that becomes 2253 minus. 2328, so we put that in our calculator. That comes out as negative 75 kilojoules. Okay. So next example, 
a little bit of a bigger reaction this time. Um, but it's exactly the same process. So we've got methane, which is CH4, so it's carbon with four hydrogens around it. So a nice tetrahedral structure. And then two moles of oxygen. I'm just going to drop once this time so you can see what it's like when you're not drawing all the molecules. And then we've got carbon dioxide, and then which is double bonds, and then water. Okay, so I need two of them, and then I need two of the waters. So for the breaking, straight lines again, breaking. So we've got one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds. And then a double oxygen to oxygen, but because there's two of them, that would then be two oxygen to oxygen double bonds. And then for the making, we've got one, two carbon to oxygen double bonds. And then we have one, two times two is four oxygen to hydrogen bonds. Okay, if you can't see when I'm getting four oxygen hydrogen bonds, you draw the other water molecule, it would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so if we then add up all these numbers, so this would be four times four, one, two, and this one would be two times, apologies for the dogs, uh, two times four, nine, eight. So then for the bond making, that would be two times seven, four, three, and then four times four, six, three. So if we total all these up in the calculator, well for the bond making, you get those values and then that totals to 2,644. And we do the same on the making side. We get those values, which then totals to the eight. So then, if we find the overall change, we've got the endothermic bond breaking plus the exothermic bond making, which two six four four minus three 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 eight will give you minus six nine four joules. Okay, so that's that example there. All the examples we've done have ended up being exothermic reactions, but if the reaction is endothermic, you need to remember to put a positive sign in front. Okay, so then one last example. You're not bored already. Um, so this one's a really sneaky one. This is why it's quite good to draw it out. So C2H4 is in fact C3, which means that you've got a carbon to carbon double bond. Okay. Oxygen's double bonds, so that'd be three times that. Here we have two carbon dioxides and then two waters. So breaking making. So for the breaking we've got one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds and then we've got one carbon to carbon double bond uh, and then we've also got three oxygen to oxygen double bonds and then for the making we've got one, two, three, four carbon to oxygen double bonds and one, two, three, four oxygen to hydrogen bonds. Okay, so if I just pull all the numbers out from the data booklet, ta da! It's magical. And then if we just add them all up, ta da again, this is what you'll get. So then for the overall entropy change, we've got the endothermic bond breaking, so 3754. Add the exothermic bond making negative four eight two four. That'd be three seven five four minus 
four, eight, two, four, which will give you negative one, zero, seven, zero, And that's the last example of this video. Um, you may have been shown to do it a different way rather than doing the net total way. There is an equation you can use to do with the projects to figure out this thing, but um, I prefer to teach it this way because I think it makes you understand what's actually happening in the reaction. So you're putting a certain amount of energy into a break of all the bonds and then you're getting a certain amount of energy out to make all the bonds and the net total of those, i.e. the difference, it gives you the overall energy change of the reaction. I know it's slightly like zero, but it's just as amazing. So, provided this video is of any use, you should now be able to use the bond entropy values given in the data booklet to determine the overall energy change for a given reaction. Um, if that's not the case, then you maybe want to watch another video, but I'm sure this will be fine. Anyway, thank you. Goodbye.